Parts of this episode of Garden Time were recorded before COVID-19 and social distancing requirements. Hey Ryan, do you have a favorite? Judy, I do. It's a new episode of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. We're at the Portland Nursery on Stark Street, and as you can hear, the April showers are bringing Mayflowers. And don't let the showers discourage you. Most of your independent garden centers have covered shopping, so make sure you go out shopping. Coming up on the show today, we'll teach you how to be successful in your garden tomatoes. We'll also be talking about squirrels and how to welcome them or discourage them. But first, dwarf iris. Well, it's iris season. I'm with Ben. We're out at Shriners Iris, and Ben, the irises are starting to bloom. And it looks like today you have a nice selection, and these are actually miniature irises, right? Yes, these are dwarf iris, the first ones to bloom. Um, so you kind of progress in height as you go. It starts with the dwarfs, so are these ones here, pretty short in height, then the intermediates, and then eventually the tall, tall ones, which will bloom here in May. So these are, you know, these are nice because they're just so compact and easy that you know you have them done up in, in pots and containers. And I think some people kind of forget that you could actually use these as a potted plant, right? Yeah, you can use any iris in pots, but dwarfs make especially good for pots. You know, their, their height sits well in pots. Uh, it's a nice splash of color early. And a great thing about pot is you can put the, the dwarfs in there, have them bloom, and then when they're done blooming, you move them off the patio. Right, or you go plant them in the yard or divide them out because they would make a great, like a border plant. Correct, plant borders, too. rock gardens, that sort of thing. And then you have, you have people that do have them in pots in containers or in, in the ground. You know, there's a little bit of care you want to take with, with an iris, either the dwarfs or the regular, right? You know. Yeah, so, uh, you know, like you definitely want a slug bait, um, and you want to get on slug bait early, so you don't have to have issues with slugs. Um, one thing when you have them in pots like this, you want to watch the water. You want to give them water, but you don't want to overwater. People tend to overwater uh, iris when they're in pots. Okay, and they'll, they'll just rot out that way. Correct, yeah. And, you know, and for people, y'all, you know, that are used to coming out, you know, we're out in your display gardens, which are just getting ready to start opening up and bursting in, into color. And you guys have your, your festival coming up, but, you know, it's going to be a little bit different this year, right? Yes. So last year we didn't open. This year we are opening, but it's online ticketing. So you need to either go on our website, ShrinersGardens.com, and select a time and a date to come um, or give us a call. And we have a cap for, uh, for entry every two hours of 75 people. So Ben, when people come out to the festival, are pets welcome? Because I know Lily's pretty <laughs> excited to be out here. Yes, pets are definitely welcome. Well-behaved dogs uh, on leash are definitely welcome. <laughs> okay, and with their admission um, and their ticketing price, what all are they gonna be able to do once they get out here? So we'll have the display gardens open like usual. We'll have the field uh, available for people who want to walk through the field, take pictures. We'll have a small gift shop, uh, cut flowers available for purchase, potted plants available for, for purchase. Uh, we won't have any you know, food vendors this year, no uh, wine tasting or uh, any other sort of entertainment. Okay, so a little bit different, but you know, the main attraction is coming out and, and view, viewing the irises anyway, right? So. Right, and especially since we weren't able to let people visit last year, we're excited to have them back this year. Yeah, and then uh, when is the festival running? It's going to be May 7th through May 31st. Okay. And so they can get on and go to your website and uh, all that information will be on there. Yep. Shrinersgardens.com. You'll have uh, online ticketing available right there on the website. Right. You know, so for more information on the irises, anywhere from the, you know, the miniature ones on up to the, to the tall ones, or for their festival, make sure you go to Shriners' website or you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you open. So Ben, it's a pleasure. You know, we can't wait for the iris start, start blooming. They're one of my favorites. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I have a really great tip of the week for you. It's about protecting young trees from lawnmower damage or from weed whacker damage. Look at this tree. It has the grass growing right up to the base of the trunk. And if you mow too close or use a weed whacker, you're going to scrape this bark and possibly lose the tree. Well, what you can do is recycle some of your plastic bottles. This is an old Gatorade bottle. You just have to cut off the top, cut off the bottom, and cut the side. And we're making a collar that you just slip around the tree, and now that tender bark is protected from any kind of damage. 
protecting your young trees. That's our tip of the week. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery. Gardening makes for wonderful family time. Whether it's updating your landscape or planting a veggie garden, at Portland Nursery, our great selection and staff of professionals can help ensure your family's success. Visit PortlandNursery.com for a list of our classes, events, or sign up for our newsletter. Portland Nursery, let our family help your family grow at 50th and Stark or 90th and Division. Look around your home's exterior. Those ugly orange, green and black algae stains look terrible. Clean them the easy way with 30 Seconds Outdoor Cleaner. It's fast and works on all outdoor surfaces. With 30 Seconds, it's clean when you want it clean. Since 1982, the wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit or driveway, the wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. Build a beautiful home inside and out at French Prairie Perennials. Inside, we have just the right creative elements to complete your decor. We offer an oasis of unusual, nature-inspired garden and home gifts and accessories. Outside, choose from our wide selection of unique dwarf conifers and sparkling companion plants. French Prairie Perennials, located between Woodburn and Wilsonville. Take exit 278 to Aurora and French Prairie Perennials. In the past, we've showed you how to make raised garden beds, you know, like the one behind Judy here we've made out of wood a couple years ago, but there's also some other options for what you can use. So we found this one from Smart Pots, and it's actually a thick fabric, so we're going to show you how to use that one, but they also make other kind of pots that you can use on your wall or else on your deck or patio. So Ryan, let's get started. Well, that was just super easy to fill that, to, you know, minutes, you know, pretty quick. You know, the nice thing about this is the ease of being able to set it up and you're versatile as to where you can put it. You know, you can put it on a driveway if you have a sunny driveway and you want to use that, your deck or a porch. It's really where you need to put it, where you have sunshine and you want to put some plants. And with the black cloth like this, there's a lot of benefits. So in the early springtime, you know, it attracts that sunlight. And so it'll warm up your soil temperature so you're able to get things to germinate quicker and to keep those roots warmer. It's also nice because in the summertime, having the cloth allows for it to breathe. So it does cool off in the summertime. So there's definitely some benefits of the cloth. And also because it's cloth all the way down, it prevents insects or rodents from getting into your vegetables or your flowers and destroying them. And with this, it's great. It's fabric so you can cut the sides and make some slits and even put more plants in on the sides of this raised bed. So if you're looking for an alternative to a raised garden bed that's simple and easy to set up, check out Smart Pots. Well, we have a great segment for you today. It's all about vines, and I'm with Sarah from Portland Nursery. And so, Sarah, what a great idea, because sometimes I think vertical gardening is kind of overlooked. It really is. I think it's hard sometimes to think, oh, I could, like, we just think of in terms of plots in the ground, and we don't think of the ways that we could bring it up and especially like arbors and growing you know around decks and sitting areas um i find it very enchanting and very a lot of ambiance so um we've picked some really special different kinds today um our first one here is star jasmine which we all know and love everyone should have one it really should the fragrance you know Wonderful. so that's why it's great to plant around an outdoor patio or um near a window but um 
So that's got like some sweet little white flowers. And it's and, evergreen, which is great. Yes, yeah, that has, that's a big one as well. Um, some clematis here, so you just can't beat that flower mm, so pretty. on a vine and um, relatively fast growing or, you know, it'll, it'll cling to things pretty easily. Um, but it doesn't like shade on its roots. So what is good to do is planting something kind of shrubby underneath the roots and then the actual leaves will be in the full sun. It's kind of its ideal situation there. So more plants to plant. We love that. Yeah. <laughs> so you need more plants is the bottom line. Definitely. And this one's so pretty, so delicate. Yeah. So that's an Akebia. And that is, um, like you say, just got kind of a different texture, which can really go a long way when mm -hmm. you're adding contrasting textures Definitely. in your garden pretty and then passion vine which is your kind of logo it's your your plant here yeah it, it's such a great um a great flower it's kind of a conversation piece just mm -hmm. because it, it's so uh intricate uh really makes a, a good statement so these are all really great additions to your garden and i think the thing that's hardest for me about vines <laughs> is the patience of oh. waiting for them to grow because <laughs> you know you want this big beautiful arbor but it's like kind of takes a while mm -hmm. for them to really yeah. grow in. Come on, let's go now. I know. So, <laughs> um, so for the instant gratification crowd, we've got some, <laughs> uh, some annual vines. And what I like to do is plant my perennial vine and then close to it, plant some annual vines so that they can really kind of give you what you're wanting while the others are growing in. Very smart. Um, so what do you have? Yeah, so this first one here, you can tell is just dying <laughs> to grow <laughs> onto it. something. This is a cup and saucer vine. And it gets just really gorgeous flowers. They're so pretty. Um, and then, you know, they'll get big and beautiful in the season. And then when it's time to where they would be competing with the perennial vine, they'll be dying off for the season. Um, and then here are some sweet potato vines. So we've got Marguerite here. And then this one here is uh, Solar Tower Black. And we've been growing these for so long, just kind of trailing that we, we don't think about how they could be on handrails or arbors or right, whatnot right. as well. Definitely. And yes, for years we've put them in baskets and growing down. So why not grow them up? It's like, that's a no brainer. Yeah. It's kind of an aha moment for everybody. <laughs> like, oh, duh, we, can, we can grow them differently. Um, so then we've also got just a real classic here, uh, sweet, Aww. sweet pea vines, and they can handle a little bit more of dappled shade. Mm -hmm. That's their preferred area. So that's really great for people who don't have a ton of sun because it can be hard sometimes. Definitely. And Sarah, this last one has such a unique flower with a unique name. It's called Rhodochiton, which is, I think, an interesting name, but what a cool flower. Yeah, this one's really great. It can get um, quite big, up to 10 feet. And it's just, I like the lush, big, um, big leaves. It really adds an element of, I don't know, just, I think, relaxation when you've got those big big leaves on it. I think that is so pretty and I, I love that idea of you what you're saying that you it's that enchanting and that look of just serenity on your garden and I think even containers you could put them in it doesn't have to be just in the ground. Yeah it's really true you could get um, some different you know put a pot under something or a trellis um, in the pot and really I think just bringing in the space and having something vertically that is giving this lush the lush leaves really makes your garden kind of feel more enclosed and more personal and more private and so it's ah. just a really great addition and almost everybody has room for a vine somewhere i think so i think so and creating a sanctuary i think that's what gardening is all about for us to feel comfortable and have our own get little getaway so please um, try to get out to the Portland Nursery on Stark Street and on Division because they'll both have these selections and then you can bring them home and make your own sanctuary there thanks so much sarah thank you Spring is all about freshness, and you can't get any fresher than Blooming Junction. From new and interesting annuals and perennials that can bring fresh color to your garden, to the freshest of produce from our fields and from local growers. We can also help you be successful with our full slate of timely and helpful classes. Freshen up your home and garden, inside and out, with a visit to Blooming Junction. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens and great tasting food for your table. You work hard in the garden. Shouldn't your gloves do the same? Garden Like a Girl makes gloves and apparel from natural, recycled, and organic materials. Garden Like a Girl gloves will help you tackle any job. 
They are designed to fit, protect your hands and nails, and they last. Plus, 10% of our profits go to cancer research. To learn more about Garden Like a Girl products, go to our website, gardenlikeagirl.com. Garden Like a Girl, ruggedly feminine. Celebrate a spring tradition. Visit the Olda Klager Lilac Gardens during the annual Lilac Days. Open daily from 10 to 4. See hundreds of blooming lilacs. Take exit 21 off I-5 in Woodland, Washington. Color, color, color. When you think of your garden, think of color. Then think of Margie's Farm and Garden. High quality plants and great customer service are our trademark. We make sure you're happy with every purchase. Whether you're a first time gardener or a seasoned professional, we'll help you be successful every time you step into your garden. Vegetables or herbs, hanging baskets or perennials, trust Margie's Farm and Garden, just off I-5 near Aurora. For over 100 years, Collier Arborcare and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. I'm with Amanda, we're out at Backyard Bird Shop, and Amanda, not only do you guys do birds, but you also do other little animals, right? Oh yes, we do lots of different animals, and one of the fun ones that we spend a big part of our day talking about are squirrels. You know, people kind of love the squirrels, and there's a couple different different types of squirrels that we know is around. So we've got area. two main native squirrels in our area. One is the Douglas squirrel, and that's your smallest backyard squirrel. Okay. And it's only gonna be about 12 inches from, from nose to tip of the tail. They're right. really adorable. But then you see the bigger, the bigger ones, ones right? right? That's about twice the size of Western gray squirrel. But they are limited in population right now, so we're really doing everything we can to protect right, them. Right, because they're kind of a little protected species. Exactly. So what are some of the things that we might need in our yard if we wanna you know, feed and attract these squirrels? So we're standing kind of in front of our squirrel wall with lots of different squirrel feeders and here's a cute um, picnic table that you can put a little um, we've got the little screws that go inside there and you can put corn in there we also have a variety of nut mixes that have a variety of tree nuts we offer filberts shelled okay. filberts and then peanut raw peanuts in the shell and out of the shell all great ways to bring squirrels into your yard and watch them when they're funny and antics. Right, because they have lots of other things. You know, they tend to like, you know, some of the bird foods and other the plants and things like that too. But oh, what absolutely. Are, what kind of, is there a special feed that we need to worry about well, with the squirrels? Well, yeah, or? so that's kind of, some of them, some of our mixes, our squirrel mixes, have sunflower seeds in them because as any bird feeder knows that the squirrels also love the sunflower right. seeds, but then a lot of the mixes also have a lot of the tree nuts in them that they enjoy as well. Okay, so there are different different feeders and different mixes. Absolutely, that and then we've got corn, um, corn cobs and then we also have like this compressed corn that kind of lasts a little bit longer and it's really hard so it's great for them to kind of sharpen their teeth on. Right because we like to have you know a wide range of wildlife in our in our yard so it's great to attract these. Lots of us do and lots of us love watching the squirrels and their funny behaviors right. for sure. Because it definitely shows that kind of the overall health of a, of a garden is to have a wide population Absolutely. of, of diff different animals. We want the squirrels, we want the bees, we want a wide variety of birds. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So if we're, you know, we have the, you know, the other thing you want to attract and bring the squirrels to your yard, but you also have ones or things that maybe detract from getting so the squirrels. So as many times as we talk about how to bring squirrels into your yard, we also talk a lot about how to keep them out of your yard. And so we have a wide variety of ways to do that safely without harming the squirrels. Um, one of the ways we have is we have caged feeders, and we have caged feeders both with, for seed and for suet, and this is an example of one of our caged suet feeders, and this is a good way to help block the squirrels from getting into your, um, the food that you're offering just for the birds. And gotcha. so some people that feed squirrels also want to feed the birds without the squirrels eating the right. bird food. Another way um, to do it is these, um, Sorry, these handy dandy, um, this is called a squirrel buster. This is kind of our <laughs> most popular, famous um, 
squirrel buster. And so it's weight driven. And so okay. birds, even as large as the northern flicker, can sit right here on this perch and eat the seed from the feeder. Oh, right. But if a squirrel gets on it, he pulls it down and it blocks. And it blocks the access. Yeah, so it's super it. awesome. Super awesome to block the access. We also have baffles that you can hang above a feeder or baffles to put on a pole underneath to keep the squirrel from climbing up the pole to get to the seed. Right. So, so those you know, are good we ways. We want to keep, you know, the squirrels can have their, their food in their area and let the birds have those because, you know, the squirrels are a little bit more aggressive. And they Absolutely. Eat that. They are. Yeah. And sometimes they will chase off your birds. Right. And so you want to be able to provide food just for the birds at times. Um, one other way to kind of keep the squirrel food, the squirrels off of your bird's food is to provide hot spicy. Our birds don't have the, the taste receptors to be able to That's taste the, the hot spice, but the mammals like squirrels do. And so oftentimes they don't like any hot meat. So we have, um, we have hot sunflower seeds and then we have a variety of hot suets that most squirrels don't eat. Every now and then there's a Cajun loving squirrel, but for the <laughs> most part, they don't like that. And so we're able to provide hot spicy foods for just our birds, but then the squirrels stay away from it. Gotcha. And then I saw one other one over there. Yo, that's yes, a... Niger. So the squirrels don't like Niger. This is also, some folks call it thistle, but our goldfinches and our lesser goldfinches, a lot of our finch family love to eat Niger, and that's not something that will attract the squirrels also. Gotcha. So, you know, you, you and your staff have, you know, a massive supply and great selection down here and very knowledgeable about you know, any questions somebody may have. So it's important to come in and talk about it, it because a lot of times it's not as simple as just putting a baffle up if it's too close to a tree that they can jump over. So we like to have a nice long conversation about what's best for situation in your backyard. Right, kind of what they want to attract, what they want to head out and kind of, you know, their situation. And you have something for everybody. We try to, right. yeah. So you'll, you'll need more information on this. Make sure you come down and talk to Amanda and her staff down at the Backyard Bird Shops, or you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over to their website. So Amanda, we appreciate all the information and we look forward to being out in our garden, bringing for the birds and the squirrels. Thank you Thanks. so much. It is so wonderful to be surrounded by roses. And if you are surrounded by roses in your garden, there is an amazing contest that you could enter to maybe win bragging rights in your neighborhood. It's the 83rd annual Royal Rosarian Rose Garden Contest that's coming up very soon. The deadline is May 28th to enter, and you can go online to gardentime.tv and click over to that website to get all the information. You don't have to have a lot of roses in your garden. It's a minimum of 12 roses. You just have to live within 20 miles of Pioneer Courthouse Square to be considered for this contest. And then you too can be the pride of your neighborhood. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. At Capital Subaru, we are family. It's not all about selling cars here. It's about our community and our families. We keep you moving. With a Subaru, it's always, what are you going to do next? And with our new space, we'll get you service faster than ever before. And we are growing. With over 72,000 square feet and 30 new service bays. Our new location is opening later this spring. I can't wait, it's a new year and it's gonna be awesome. At Capital Subaru, we are your way on the parkway. Look around your home's exterior. Those ugly orange, green, and black algae stains look terrible. Clean them the easy way with 30 Seconds Outdoor Cleaner. It's fast and works on all outdoor surfaces. With 30 Seconds, it's clean when you want it clean. Since 1926, the Bonide Company has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonide has the answer. Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew controls most common garden insects and is derived from a naturally occurring bacteria to help with your organic gardening. It's safe to use even on fruits and vegetables. Visit Bonide.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonide Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. Celebrate a spring tradition, visit the Holda Klager Lilac Gardens during the annual Lilac Days. Open daily from 10 to 4. See hundreds of blooming lilacs. Take exit 21 off I-5 in Woodland, Washington. At Sagawa Nursery, we always talk about taking your garden from ordinary to extraordinary. For us, that means bringing you the newest and best plants and unique garden items to you, our customer. 
For you, that means we'll help you transform your garden into something that's extraordinary. We also have some great gift items and even a few surprises for inside your home, too. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. Well, water is one of those things we use every day, but where does it come from? I'm with Christine. Christine, you work with a lot of regional water providers, and where does our water come from? That's correct. So there are in the Tri-County area here, um, Washington, Clackamas, and Multnomah County, there's 24 public water systems that are members of the Regional Water Providers Consortium. And um, through that group, we coordinate a lot of different things. We coordinate water conservation, we coordinate um, source water supply and um, emergency preparedness programs. Um, and yeah, you're right. Most people wake up every day. They use their water right. every single day, but they don't give it a lot of thought. Not yeah, because I know it's all. like, you know, I have an idea, I think, where my water comes from, but there's, it's maybe different for di different areas, right? Or they're coming from different sources. That's right. So in this um, Tri-County area, we actually have five different um, drinking water sources. Um, the Bull Run watershed is one. The Clackamas River is another drinking water source. Uh, various groundwater sources. There's also the Tualatin Trask Rivers and also the Willamette River. You know, we're standing out here in front of this very large reservoir. And right. this is a new reservoir, right? This is. This reservoir behind us is a six million gallon uh, water reservoir. It's, um, it's kind of deceptive in that half of this tank is actually below ground, roughly half of it. So six million gallons. This was a four year project. It was a joint project between Clackamas River Water here in the Northern Clackamas area and Sunrise Water Authority. So Clackamas River Water serves drinking water to mainly the unincorporated area up yeah. here in Clackamas. And then Sunrise serves water to Happy Valley and Damascus. And so, you know, we're taking water from a reservoir like this into somebody's home. There's a lot of infrastructure that goes along with that. Yeah, there is a lot that goes <laughs> on. Um, like with this reservoir in this Tri-County area, there's roughly 200 different sizes and shapes of uh, water reservoirs, tanks and towers um, that hold the water. There's also over 7,000 miles of pipe that delivers that water and that piping ranges anywhere from pipes that's about the size of a nickel to 90 inches around in diameter. I mean you could easily walk right through that and then there's you know there's roughly 1,100 people that work for our public water systems that work very hard every day to make sure that that water is delivered safe and in adequate quantities. Right, you know, as we've gotten through, you know, various storms and things throughout, you know, the, la the last year and pandemics, you know, there's, you know, people have to think about safety, it's like where does their water come from? And they always expect that water to come on regardless of what's going on. And but, you guys help, help ensure that and have to plan for that. Right? Absolutely. You know, people expect it so much, there's no thought to it. You know, we all wake up every day and we use, you know, we make coffee and we brush our teeth and right. take a shower and we don't think about that. And literally that infrastructure that, that serves that safe, clean water to you is right under your feet every day. It's the fire hydrant, you know. It takes a lot of people working very hard every day and then some to make sure that water is delivered safely. One of the things we'd like to point out, this has been a really rough year. We, you know, we had uh, wildfires, we had that crazy ice storm, a pandemic, and still people were able to turn their faucets on without a hiccup and have clean, safe drinking water. Right, which is, which is so important to take, take into consideration. And you guys plan out, you know, for, for future to come. So it's not just, you know, living in the now. You always have to be thinking about, you know, when that water's gonna come on and make sure it always does. That's correct. Our, our drinking water providers will plan out as far as 50 years into the future, you know, 10 years, 20 years, 25, 30. So that they're thinking ahead. And a lot of it is based on um, population growth, which is a really big one we're dealing with here in the North Clackamas County area. Um, 
you know, regulations and rules that are coming down the pike that they're going to have to answer to, that they're going to have to change possibly their treatment, you know, possibly one of the things, seismic resiliency, that's one of the things that has come down the last few years. And so, and all of that takes some funding. So they're planning ahead so that they're able to have the funding they need to be able to. Right. So, you know, it's that. just, you know, it's such an important and vital piece of what we all do. You know, we all need water, we all expect it, and we all, all want it. So we appreciate you guys, you know, taking you. care of that and making sure that we all have our, have our water. So Thank you know, you for so more much. information on this, you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over to their website and then learn where your water comes from. So thanks for being out here today. Christine. Thank you. When Garden Time was at the Hulda Klager Lilac Gardens, we learned something about taking the flowers indoors for bouquets. And it's about helping them to last longer. And it's as easy as taking the stems and getting a hammer and just gently smashing the ends. And then you're opening up the vascular system so it brings water into the flowers to let them bloom. And if you're not comfortable using a hammer to smash on your flowers, you could also use your clippers and basically just put a slice in the ends like this. Vertically. So what that does is opens it up, also allows that water to come in, stick in the water, and it'll make your lilacs last longer. Since 1987, French Prairie Gardens has brought you the best in farm fresh produce, beautiful plants, and memorable family events. Spring is here, and now is the time to get your garden ready with our wide selection of bedding plants and hanging baskets. Experience the best the country has to offer at French Prairie Gardens. For 90 years, Espoma has one guiding principle, develop the finest organic gardening products that work in harmony with nature, grow beautiful gardens, and make a greener world for the future. From our soil products to our plant foods, we have always been committed to the environment and sustainability. We use a vast array of natural and organic ingredients and package them in our 100% solar powered plant. Look for the quality line of Espoma products at your local independent garden center. Espoma, organic from the beginning. Come to where the color is, come to Egan Gardens. We've worked hard growing healthy plants for you so that your gardening is easy. Add sparkle to your garden with our perennials, container plants, and skillfully designed baskets and planters. Stop and get a mood lifter out here on the farm. We have lots of fresh air and lots of space. There's lots of blooming plants, new vegetable starts, shrubs, and berry bushes. Egan Gardens, where it's all about the plants. We're located west of I-5 at exit 263 on River Road. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terra Casa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terra Casa. Terra Casa in downtown Damascus. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. This time of year, we're so excited about getting our vegetable gardens going. I'm at Farmington Gardens with Shannon, and Shannon, you have a, such a wide range of vegetables, and you're gonna focus on just a few here that have a com commonality. Mm -hmm. So all of these are things I've planted in my garden along with other things, but these guys have a few things in common, including how we begin planting them. And then also they have a couple tricky things that we can troubleshoot with a couple other products too. Excellent. So they're nightshades, which mm -hmm. are like tomatoes, tomatoes and you got eggplants. Eggplants and tomatillos, but also uh, fun fact, the summer squash, like the yellow squash and zucchini and patty pans, also have some tricky things to them too. So you're talking about blossom end rot, which is that kind of a black spot on the bottom of fruit. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look very tasty either, but it can be prevented oh. by utilizing tomato tone, especially because of the calcium in this product. So with nutrients that are balanced, you can prevent a lot of different things with your plants. 
Um, Tomato Tone specifically works awesome on all of these guys because they all can get blossom end rot. And you can prevent it by planting with a very good fertilizer to begin with. And then about every three to four weeks, I like to use this as just a really good dose of vitamins to your plants because as you're watering, you're actually washing away nutrients from the soil. So this is replenishing what you might lose, which will help keep your plants healthy and give it what it needs to not have the blossom and rot to ah. it. But I see that you also have another one called Garden Tone, mm -hmm. so that's something you can use also. I like to use this universally. Okay. And I like to use uh, Tomato Tone specifically on the ones that get that little calcium deficiency and they need a little extra pick-me-up. This is a little higher in calcium than this is. This is also great for all the other vegetables in your garden though. Uh, excellent. And then I see you do have lime too, and sometimes mm -hmm. people want to use lime for that calcium deficiency yep. too. And that works also. I just think they're both good ways to treat kind of a similar thing, but the tomato tone is just a really good one to use just because the nutrient balance is specific for those types of plants. Oh, perfect. And I think that we do need to talk about these structures that you have. Absolutely. And so why do you have two different kinds of structures for tomatoes? So we were talking about um, small scale gardening with all the new gardeners. And sometimes on a patio, maybe you don't have the real estate for all the different types of tomatoes. And these are awesome. These are your classic tomato cages. But uh, indeterminate, especially the indeterminate tomatoes, might need something a little more tricky. And if you're using a space saving device like this, which is a Sea Bites trellis, and you could build it any structure that you want with these little clips and these poles to really maximize your space for your tomatoes or for any of your vining plants gives you kind of a diverse amount of climbing structures for your tomatoes. That is a great idea because there's usually on the tags, it'll mm -hmm. tell you if it's determinant and, mm -hmm. and do you have like a good way to remember determinant? <laughs> so determinant, I like to say that it's already a predetermined shape ah. and indeterminate is more wild and unruly. Oh, sure. Yeah. That is good because we forget because there's so much information and we just want to be successful. Absolutely. And there's so many different kinds of tomatoes too. So there is. So Shannon, you talked about like spacing and timing and all of that great information to know. And so we have everything really to go to be successful. Mm -hmm. But I noticed that we didn't talk about this liquid here. So yeah. why would we want to use that? So you're right. The, the space and the structure and everything's great. Plus a good feeding schedule. If you have a small space, like we talked about, using the liquid might be a really good alternative for you uh, as far as a bonus of fragrance. So it's a little milder scent when you're using it and you mix it with water and use it every time that you water your plants. Might be beneficial if you're using a small space to entertain. It, it helps out a little bit with that too. But we've also got this guy for your standard planting. And then if you're a big gardener <laughs> like me, we've got it in the large bags too. Ah, so. Really something for everyone because Absolutely. you do have all those just different kinds of spaces. We all have 40 mm -hmm. acres or a small plot. And you can grow vegetables anywhere. So you could just use the right tools to do it. Excellent. Yeah. Well, really, there is so much information here and it is easy. But if you have any questions, please come to Farmington Gardens and there's lots of people to talk to. Shannon's here, all the staff, and it's going to be a great year for vegetables in your garden. Thanks so much, Shannon. Thank you. I am surrounded by pretty baskets. I'm at French Prairie Gardens. And so what's going on with these baskets? They're gorgeous. Oh yeah, we have lots and lots to choose from. All sorts of different colors. We've even come up with a few fun combinations this year that are new and exciting. Yeah, so what did you do different? Oh, we added some coleus to some of them fun. and even some dahlias just as a little bit of a different look to some of those baskets. Ah, and you know, I love the coloring because it just depends on your personality. Do I like sweet and feminine or do I like bold and just really bright colors? Yes, yeah, and one of the fun things that we do is we organize all of our baskets in color. So if you want some to go along with the other ones, they don't have to exactly match, sure. but they can match the color scheme that you're going for. Nice, and I know this time of year, we have a little bit of ideas that you should be doing. So what yes. about Jack's? Yeah, definitely. We love the Jack's fertilizer. Are the triple 20s our favorite. It kind of keeps them growing and going long, but then also blooming all season long. Uh, so it kind of keeps them fed. It'd be like if you were on a water only diet, that would be no good. <laughs> exactly. You need vitamins. Uh, yes. And then water wand. I mean, yes. it makes it so much yeah. easier. Yeah. So we have these great dram one touch ones, which is really nice because um, it doesn't take a whole lot with your finger. They're actually our favorite on the nursery. We use them. Um, and then the longer ones are great if you have them up in the air and you can reach your baskets um, you know because 
nobody wants to have to take a water can and go real up high. And then the water <laughs> goes down your armpit. And yes, yes, always, <laughs> always. <laughs> and then something special is going on soon. Yes, yeah, Mother's Day weekend. We have our Mother's Day brunch on Sunday. Nice. Yes, yeah, we brought it back this year. It's a buffet style brunch. Uh, and then we're running them every hour. So you do have to book those online though because reservations are required because of COVID, we do have um, restrictions on how many people that we can have per sure, seating. Sure, but then something fun for kids too. Yes, yeah, the barnyard's gonna be open, so our farm animals, we have the tube slide, oh, tire fine. pile, obstacle courses, rollers, all sorts of good stuff. Oh, fun. So not just for all the adults, but for kids too, because no, it's yeah, Mother's Day weekend. Yeah, definitely. And the farm bar's open, so we do have beer, wine, mimosas, whatever you'd like to enjoy to make mom a happy camper that day. <laughs> That's <laughs> so true. That's so true. So really, so much fun out here. It's, it's about flowers, of course, and baskets, but it's about fun for your family too. Please go to gardentime.tv, click over their website and make your reservations to come out for Mother's Day brunch. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks, Judy. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. We're filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit 5, east of Salem. Ryan, you need to brush up your look. Ryan, that is better. It's always better when you show off your garden time pride. Check out the Garden Time store on our webpage for a great selection of Garden Time gifts and apparel. Choose a hoodie, shirt, hat, bag, or mask for yourself or as a gift for the Garden Time fan in your life. See the complete selection on the Garden Time website. Pick up some Garden Time gear and show your Garden Time pride. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. There's nothing more inviting than a garden full of beautiful clematis. And your chance to see the queen of vines is at the Rogerson Clematis Garden at Lusher Farm. Join us for Mother's Day in the Garden. There'll be plant sales, potting demonstrations, and a raffle. You can even get a tour of the garden. Become a member and get $5 off your plant purchase. Every garden deserves to have a clematis. To learn more about the garden and all of its many activities, go to rogersonclematiscollection.org. I am at one of the hidden gems of Portland, and so I'm with Mike, and so Mike, tell us exactly where we are. Well, we're in Southeast Portland at the site of the Van Veen Nursery, which is now the Van Veen Heritage Garden, and uh, Garden and Nursery. And it's an old, it was established in 1926 wow. by Theodore Van Veen. Um, when he passed on his son, Ted, who many people knew in Portland, uh, took it over in 1961 and eventually uh, his daughter Kathy uh, took it over as well. But unfortunately she died uh, four years ago and the property was turned over to the American Rhododendron Society wow. and then established as the Van Veen Heritage Garden. It is so nice because there is such an active uh, society here. I mean, we've been over at Crystal Springs many times to talk about their big display and uh, the show and everything. And so what a great partnership to save this site because it's almost four acres. Yeah, four acres, and you mentioned Crystal Springs. A lot of the plants you see at Crystal Springs came from here. Wow. Or were propagated here. And this is the site of propagation for a lot of rhododendrons throughout the world, and still is. Wow. Uh, we are now a, a custom propagation business. People send us cuttings, in other words, from Nova Scotia or wherever, and we root them and send them back when they have roots on them. Wow, and I see there's so much mother stock here. So that's amazing. I mean, it's a display garden that you can go take cuttings and just make lots of other plants for other people to put in their gardens. That's, that's right. And the, the unique thing about this garden 
is that it has about 3,000 varieties of wow. rhododendrons, which is unheard of any place else in the world, really. Ah. Um, and a lot of the plants here are, are her what would you call heritage plants, have been here for years and years. Many of them not in the trade anymore, but maybe should be. <laughs> so we're constantly testing those new varieties that come out from hybridizers and evaluating whether they should or shouldn't be. But some of the heritage plants here are, are on a comeback, really. Uh, some of the nurseries are realizing these things have, uh, have passed the test of time. That is so, that is great to save that. And then you've just received a collection of plants too. Yes, the Bovee Nursery um, over by Lewis and Clark College, many of you have probably been there, uh, just offered to give us uh, a major part of their collection of Varea rhododendrons, which is a Malaysian rhododendron that's, that's not as hardy as most of these. Beautiful things, and we'll try to show you some pictures of those in the greenhouses, but we received 800 plants about 160 varieties, which we were ta talking about the other day. It may be the largest collection in, in the United States. Excuse me. Wow, <clears throat> wow. And then you'll have it here. It, that is just so tremendous. And uh, for people that are rhododendron collectors and just fanatics, I mean, they're going to just be jumping up and down because that is just something just so exciting to have. Yeah, it's a really different approach to rhododendrons. Like I say, they're more houseplant rhododendron oriented where these are outside and some of these will go down to minus 25. The Vareas, uh, uh, anything under freezing, you have to have some protection on sure. them. But they are very, very different, long, tubular, beautiful colored flowers. Neat, yeah. neat. And so really, we need to stay tuned because there's a lot of things that are gonna be happening here in the future. Yes, our mission uh, is to educate. And so we are, we are setting up uh, opportunities for classes with uh, the school children to come in and get their hands on some cuttings and actually set them here and come back when they're rooted. You know, there's one thing to see the the, the YouTubes and those programs are, are wonderful, but to get your hands on something and just to be here and to walk underneath big old plants is a totally different experience. So Mike, for, for people that are so interested in this, how can they get involved here? Well, they can go to our website, Van Veen Nursery or Van Veen Heritage Garden. That'll be easy to find. And they can call us if they, if they have time to come by and uh, work in a greenhouse. You know, when the weather's bad, sometimes that's a great place to be. You know the Pacific Northwest, there's always weeds to pull, something to do, <laughs> pinching of buds, that kind of thing. Uh, so we look forward to having volunteers here. We do have some volunteers from the neighboring community, but we always look forward to others. And of course, a garden like this takes a lot of upkeep and, and funds. So we're always looking for some financial support as well. Well, you know, there are two websites to go to. We have all that information on Garden Time. It is going to be such a lovely place. It's lovely right now, and we can just look forward to the future. Thanks so much, Mike. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. At Garland Nursery, you'll find top quality plants, Four generations of garden know-how. Fun and fantastic garden decor. And the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. Since 1929, Grimm's Fuel has powered great gardens around our area. With our comprehensive composting and yard debris services, we can apply quality garden mulch, compost, and blended soils with our experienced crews and trucks, including our landscape rock and bark products as well. We are proud of our industry-leading state-of-the-art composting facilities. We also can take care of your fuel oil and firewood needs. Grimm's Fuel, building great gardens since 1929. Hey everybody, I'm Brian Bauman from Bauman's Farm and Garden, and we have so many different types of baskets and sizes available. I wanted to take a second to show you all the different ones that are available right now at the farm. First is our 12 inch full sun basket. Hard to believe this is our smallest one. It's still big and beautiful. The next size up from there is our 14 inch basket. These guys are a little bit bigger. They're gonna grow three to four feet long by the end of the summer and bloom all summer long. 18 inch is the next size up. They actually have a swivel hanger on the top so that when the wind blows, they turn. 
And finally, last but not least, these are our 10 gallon city baskets. They're huge and beautiful. They're gonna get like four to five feet by the end of the summer. That's just our sun options. Let me show you some of our shade options next. As we transition from sun to shade, Calvercoas are that perfect option to kind of handle that area where maybe you have morning sun and afternoon shade. These are really great for that. But if you have an area that's full shade, we have a couple different sizes that'll work for you. This is our 10 inch begonia basket. One of our smaller baskets, but sure does pack a big punch of color. Our 12 inch mixed shade, begonias, coleus, oh my. Lots of different colors and textures. These will do great in full shade. Our largest shade basket are these beautiful 18 inch mixed shade containers. No matter what place you have, we have the right hanging basket that's gonna look great all summer. We look forward to seeing you soon. Judy, what are you doing? You said to follow you. Follow us on Facebook. Oh, man. Well, we invite all of our viewers to follow the Garden Time page on Facebook. And on our Facebook page, you'll find links to stories, you'll see upcoming events, and you also might even find a funny joke or two. So don't forget, go to the gardentime.tv webpage and click the link for Facebook. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Well, I'm out here with Ken Wild at Forward Greens. Ken, we are standing in this warehouse that's this very impressive wall of lights and plants. What are we looking at? So we're into Foreign Greens vertical farm here. Uh, Foreign Greens, we're committed to growing the healthiest and freshest greens for the local community. What we do here is by stacking up to 26 feet up in the air, we're able to condense all our growing space. So we grow up instead of grow out and we're able to save tremendously on water by recirculating our water. But the most important thing is, is that we're able to deliver extremely fresh products to our consumers. And so what kind of products are you growing, growing in here? We have things ranging from microgreens, broccoli, kohlrabi, all the way to baby greens, arugula, kale, you name it. Okay. And it's, you know, it's a little different process than a lot of our viewers are used to looking at, you know, greenhouse operations with, you know, hoop houses and lighting. We're in the middle of a warehouse. So and it's, you know, I don't see big beds of soil or right. big pots. So what, what's the process of, of growing these? So growing it, you know, it's not that different from a greenhouse. Um, we control all of our humidity, our temperature, lighting controls. But on top of that, um, we just grow up with LED lights. And if you think about where growing starts, it starts with the seeds and the soil. We use both of those ingredients and then we go into a hoop house type environment to start with the germination process. Thereafter, okay. they come here for anywhere between seven to 17 days of growth, and then they get harvested. And so, and you have multiple different, do some of the plants are growing differently or better than others, right? Mm -hmm. So what kind of uh, products are, are grown in here? So, you know, kale, arugula, very vigorous. Tatsu is also vigorous. And we also have things like pea shoots as well, where they're extremely vigorous in growth. Okay. And there's, you know, in growing times, you say very a little bit, but it's a, it's a pretty quick turn. Product, yeah, right? so on a rough basis, on average, we're turning roughly 20 times in a single year. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And you were saying that some of these crops are anywhere, you know, you'll start harvesting in, in a week up to, you know, two and a half weeks. Two and a half weeks, like yep. And then, and then the process, you're doing all of everything in-house here, right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's an interesting point. You know, if you think about... Um, maybe arugula or spinach that's coming from California or Arizona. Oftentimes, from seeding to harvesting to packing, transit, they all trade hands at each of those nodes. For us, we seed here, we harvest, and we pack. So a lot of that supply chain transit time is truncated down to a, in a matter of a, a couple weeks to the finishing part, a few hours. 
Right, and you were, you know, we were looking at the, the processing uh, place a little bit earlier, and you were, you were saying, you know, how quick are you getting product out by the time you harvest it? How soon is it getting into the, cooler. the store? Right? Yeah, so from the moment of harvest, it hits the cooler after being packed within a 30 minute window. Wow. And then after that, um, a distributor, uh, then to the retailer, it's probably within a 48 hour window that our consumers can see it on the shelves. You know, a lot of us that do gardening at home, you know, it's, it's a pretty seasonal crop that we grow. But this is a different process. It's a, it's a little bit different, right? Right. Um, because we control the environment in here and we're sheltered from issues with snow, rain, extremely hot weather, we're able to grow all year round and provide an extremely fresh product all year round. Which, which is pretty, pretty amazing to be able to get, get that con continuity. But it's also a pretty, you know, it's a very environmental friendly process, right? That's correct. We save tremendously on water, roughly 95%. And then on land, we're able to save 97% on land as compared to an outdoor farm. You know, and since we're growing inside, do we need to worry about pests on these kind of plants? We actually don't. Um, we don't apply any sort of pesticide, fungicide, or herbicides onto our products because we don't have those issues when we're indoors. And as a result of that, we don't need to triple wash or wash our greens with a chlorinated bath or anything like that. You know, and since it's a year round harvest, you know, we see a lot of staff going around. You don't have to worry about seasonality of their staff, do you? That's right, because we don't, we're not affected by seasonalities here. We're able to retain and train a year round staff group. And because of that, we're pretty tightly knit and all the staff are extremely well trained on cleanliness, GMPs, and really focus on customer service. And so uh, you, have, you have, I forget, how many different uh, products do you say you're growing now? We have roughly 11 SKUs at this point. Okay, and where can consumers go that are, that are looking for your products? Yeah, so you know, we're in Central Oregon at a place like Roth's. Um, we're also in New Seasons, Zoo Pants, Basics, uh, Chuck's in Vancouver, up in Seattle, Metropolitan Market, in addition to Whole Foods. And so if a, a consumer's looking to go, where's the best place to find, find your uh, product? Probably Whole Foods if you're up and down the coast. Okay, and you guys have a website that yeah. they can go, go find that too? And that's forgreens.com. So, you know, Ken, it's just a, a fascinating process to see it, you know, from the seeding to the germinating to the growing and the harvesting and how it gets out to the door. So if you're looking for some very fresh product that's grown here locally, and you know hydroponically yep. you know make sure you check out forward greens you can go to their website or you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over so ken it's just fascinating being out here i appreciate the time and being able to see the operation thank you for your time thank you. ryan i think i'm going to stay inside where it's nice and dry at the portland nursery on stark street and on division they have shopping undercover as do many of our local independent garden centers where you can stay dry and pick out plants now for more information on today's show or any of our other episodes go to gardentime.tv judy and i thank you for watching and we'll see you next week on garden time The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.